On June 6, 1971, three Russian astronauts left for space, but never returned. Ground Control witnessed a successful mission on the world's first space station, Salyut 1. However, something deadly began to unfold under the radar. But could the disaster have been avoided? Let's find out. Humanity's early foray into space was marred with a handful of disasters. So much that NASA had prepared a tribute statement for Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin just in case they never returned from the moon. Thankfully, they didn't have to publish it on that occasion. But way back in January 1986, speechwriters were called in to compose tributes to the seven-man crew who died aboard the Challenger spaceflight, just 73 seconds after it took off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It was a huge blow for NASA and its officials, who had hoped that Krista McAuliffe, a school teacher, would become the first U.S. civilian to travel to space. But unfortunately, that dream turned into a huge fireball, even before she crossed the Karman line. On February 1st, 2003, another terrifying disaster rocked the space industry. Members of the Space Shuttle Columbia were on their way back to Earth after a 15-day mission in space. The shuttle had re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, and astronauts were happily recording videos of what turned out to be their last moments. A damage caused by a piece of insulative foam during launch allowed hot atmospheric gases to penetrate the heat shield and destroy the internal wing structure, which caused the orbiter to become unstable and break apart. Vladimir Komarov suffered a similar fate in April 1967. The cosmonaut had completed the challenging atmospheric re-entry and was hoping to touch down successfully, but a parachute failure sent his Soyuz-1 spacecraft crashing into the ground at incredible speed. He died on the spot. Ten flights after this sad incident, another Soyuz spacecraft would be involved in a disaster. But unlike the Challenger, Columbia, and the Soyuz-1 tragedy, this one happened within the confines of space. But how did the incident pan out? On the 6th of June, 1971, three Russian astronauts, Georgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Patsayev, traveled to the Soyuz 1 space station aboard the Soyuz 11 spacecraft. About 24 hours later, they arrived at the destination without any problems. The cosmonauts spent the next 23 days performing several experiments on the world's first space station. They grew Chinese cabbage and bulb onions, took spectrograms of stars, and some never-seen-before photos of snow and ice on the banks of the River Volga. They also performed experiments centered around human reaction and performance under prolonged weightlessness. Coincidentally, Viktor Patsayev's birthday fell within the mission, and his crewmates made it a memorable event with a surprise birthday feast of veal, cookies, and blackberry juice. Back in Russia, the three men had become national heroes and a regular feature on television. Having ticked off everything on their mission list, they set out to return to Earth on the 29th of June, 1971. They transported their scientific records, film, and logbooks into the Soyuz 11 spacecraft. And after three hours of routine checks and preparation, Dobrovolsky undocked the spaceship and they began their journey back to base at exactly 6.28 p.m. The Soyuz 11 would complete three more orbits before the crew notified the ground control that they were about to descend. Goodbye, Yantar. Till we see you soon on Mother Earth, the control room said over the radio, to which Dobrovolsky replied, Thank you. Be seeing you. I am starting orientation. Flight engineer Vladislav Volkov also jokingly reminded ground control officials to get their welcome drink ready. Little did he know, they were never going to taste it. At 10.35, the crew fired up the engine for a seven-minute deorbit burn. At the time, Soyuz 11 was flying at an altitude of about 160 kilometers, or 99 miles. Before re-entering Earth's atmosphere, both the work compartment and the service module were routinely jettisoned. This occurred at about 10.47, when radio communications abruptly ended when the work compartment separated, well before the normal ionospheric blackout. The pressure inside the capsule fell drastically. Unknown to the officials at the mission control, the cosmonauts began to lose air as well. 
All efforts to establish communication with the space capsule were met with a resounding silence, the first hint that something may have gone wrong. Four minutes later, aviation radar picked up signals from the capsule entering the Soviet airspace. Officials knew well enough that the capsule was still re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, which should normally affect communication. As the clock ticked off, flight engineers in the mission control room were hoping for the best, but expected the worst. Their hopes were given a boost 10 minutes before touchdown when the space capsule's drogue parachute miraculously deployed before the main canopy followed. Yet, however, the crew were still unresponsive and replied for no radio call. The tension was palpable. Eventually, Soyuz 11's automatic systems worked perfectly and maneuvered the service module to a safe landing. Just two minutes later, the recovery team arrived at the scene. After several failed attempts to get the crew to open the ship's hull, they forced their way in. What they saw next was beyond terrifying. The bodies of all three astronauts lay bare on the floor of the capsule, with blood trickling out of their noses and ears. Their faces were distorted by dark spots that looked more like bruises. Rescuers noticed that the mission commander, Georgi Dobrovolsky, was still warm but all efforts to revive him proved useless. The rescue team immediately sent the code 111 to the control room. This cryptic message was an indication of the cosmonaut's health status. As protocol, recovery teams are mandated to rate the health status of the astronauts on their return to Earth using a range of numbers between one and five. The number one, as used in this case, meant fatal injuries. Two represent serious injuries. Three meant casual injuries. Four signified a stable health condition, and five stood for excellent. So how come all three cosmonauts aboard the capsule got the worst health rating? Citing the seating positions of the cosmonauts, the investigation team speculated that Dobrovolsky and Volkov had taken off their seatbelts to search for the hole that allowed air escape from the capsule. Using the health trackers, they were able to monitor the heart rates of both cosmonauts as they searched frantically moments before their death. According to the report of the investigation, Batsayev was left gasping for oxygen within 50 seconds as his pulse dropped significantly. 60 seconds later, all three cosmonauts were left lifeless. And after a large-scale forensic investigation, officials traced the accident to a faulty air vent that was forced open as the orbital and the descent module separated. The entire Russian space industry and the world at large mourned the passing of the three astronauts who became national heroes, and they were given a befitting burial. Following the accident, all astronauts were mandated to wear spacesuits during launch and re-entry. But could the tragedy have been avoided? Alexei Leonov, a veteran Russian astronaut, noted in his book, Two Sides of the Moon, that he had advised the Soyuz 11 crew to shut the valve manually between the descent and orbital modules as he didn't trust the automatic system. Although this deviated from the flight regulations, Leonov wrote, I had trained for a long time for the missions they were flying, and in my opinion, this was the safest procedure. But unfortunately, they failed to yield Leonov's advice and eventually paid the ultimate price for it. After the flight, Leonov went back and tried closing one of the valves himself and found that it took nearly a minute to do, too long in an emergency situation with the spacecraft's atmosphere escaping fast. 